uh, no, so the presenter is actually Dr. Cancrini. Thank you for introducing me, and thank you all of, all of you for giving me the opportunity to be here. So I have no potential conflict of interest. The aim of our study was to evaluate the association between prostatic calcification and um, or low urinary tract symptom in a group of patients with benign prostatic enlargement. We start collecting data and we reach the number of 201 patients in two different centers in Italy. All patient were, uh, for all patients, we assessed medical, medical history, pharmaceutical history, um, physical activity history using PASI score, uroflometry, and PSI, both pleasure and everything. In particular, we study urinary tract symptom using IPSS score. We split the IPSS score in three data, the symptoms, the storage symptom, the voiding symptoms, and the nocturia. When we perform transrectal ultrasound to measure the prostate volume, we also count the number of calcification inside the gland. As a result, we found 90 patients inside our group uh, with prostatic calcification. Out of them, 44 were considered with high number of calcification. We, uh, sing, we, we call this group significant, uh, significant number of, of calcification where, when there were more than four calcification during the um, ultrasound. 44 patients were involved, were considering high, uh, high group, high, high significant group of calcification. And inside this group, both nocturia and storage symptom evaluated by IPSS score were higher. So more episode of nocturia and higher IPS storage IPSS score. So moving to multivariate analysis, we confirm that both um, we confirmed that calcification, more than four calcification are risk factor for storage symptom and for nocturia. In our study, so in our court, which is not a big court, unfortunately, uh, prostatic calcification are associated with a higher risk of nocturia episode and storage LATs. Of course, we do need a bigger study to confirm our data. And most of all, we need a bigger data to understand the pathophysiology behind those results. Thank you. Are there, are there questions or, or comments? Yes. Yeah, we don't know. Teacher Gott from the Netherlands. Yeah. Hi. Was there an association between the prostate volume and the number of calcifications? We look for that, and unfortunately, there was no significant statistics association. I was intrigued to see that to recruit 201 patients in this study, your study period extended from 2009 yeah. for nearly a decade. Can you explain that? Yes, I can explain because this actually is a database that is part of bigger database. So we start the bigger database, the prospective database in 2009, and we add more and more factors to study year after year. So we decide to add prostatic classification many years later. Uh, it was 2016 when we started that. So, but we still we did use the the, the original database. Thank you, Dr. Crini. The next question well. is, there are very perfectly good ways to evaluate LUTs and nocturia. Yes. So I was just wondering what the message of your presentation is in terms of prostatic calcification and association. Presumably, you're not suggesting we um, evaluate the prostatic calcifications and more than four calcifications to evaluate LUTs and nocturia. No, 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 not at all. In fact, it is the, the opposite. We suggest that when we do have more than more episode of nocturia and a lot of lats, uh, we can say storage symptom. We are we can uh, start to think about prostatic calcification and give a, a, a patient an explanation of what is going on. So it's more like something to talk about with your patient than something that you need to study to uh, to have results for nocturia. 
Of course, it's much easier to talk about your patient how many times you wake up during the night instead of during the count of calcification, that's for sure. Thank you. But, yes. Tom? No. Is there a question? I don't know. It's an expert. Okay, interesting. One, one methodological question. Yeah. Like, did the person who did the ultrasound, the, the transrectal ultrasound, did he or she know how much the person had nocturia? Uh, yes, because the, the ultrasound was performed after the IPSS score assessment. Do you think that affected the interpretation? Um, I don't think so, because since we, we're collecting so many data, <laughs> so it's... Do you may... think the more the data, the less bias? Um, not, not sure about that, but... <laughs> yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> but yeah, it's pro I mean, this is a, who knows. But I mean, is there any way to go back and somebody else to check them? If they... Yes, definitely. I mean, this, this study is still open, so we're still collecting data. One of the biggest issues is actually we are collecting data for nocturnal polyuria. So in the last year, we add bladder diary. So the next step, it will be actually involved nocturnal polyuria. Okay, very good. And microphone one. Uh, so this was um, first described in 2013, the association with prostate calcifications yes. and LUTs. What does this study therefore add? Or what do you hope to add? Um, that, that's a good question. <laughs> so we, we hope, I mean, we, we were looking for more uh, that we were looking to confirm the data that first came out on 2030 in our court First of all, to see if the if the data were I mean if we could okay. if so we could do the same the same work and what, what, and what's felt to be the pathophysiology of prostate calcifications is it not related to cardiovascular risk again? That's a good point. I mean, we did we did actually uh, one of the other points that we did study was metabolic syndrome involved in this in this population. There was no statistical correlation in. In this, in recessive calcification and metabolic syndrome, but we're still looking for more like pathophysi pathophysiology behind the problem. Thank you. You're welcome. It was the was the relationship between prostatic calcifications and nocturia independent of the relationship between prostatic calcifications and overactive bladder? Yes, they were they were study independent. So the ones who didn't have overactive bladder and had just pure nocturia had an increased incidence of prostatic calcification. So that's the point. We are uh, now studying this. So these data were before, I mean, did not involve the blood diary. So we, that's the, that will be the next step. So we, we, we are, I'm not presenting you the data with uh, overactive bladder and nocturn, uh, calcification and nocturnia porrea because we are still working on that. Yeah, because that would be even harder to explain, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.